Welcome students to our class of computational thinking where we will learn about what it is and its different elements in detail. Computational thinking is the first step that comes before starting programming. It is the process of breaking down a problem into simple steps that a computer can understand. It involves four elements, decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction and algorithms. Computational thinking is a technique for solving complex or non-complex problems and ambiguous puzzles in the field of computer science. It involves many concepts that help make problem solving effective and possible regardless of the problem's difficulty. It is the ability to integrate human creativity and insight with machine computing. It is also a cognitive or thought process that uses logical reasoning to solve issues and better understand objects, methods and systems. It encompasses the abilities such as the ability to think algorithmically, to think in terms of decomposition, to think in generalizations, identifying and utilizing patterns, the ability to think in abstractions, selecting appropriate representations, and also the ability to think in terms of evaluation. Let's learn more about problem solving now. We all face situations to solve challenges at some point in our lives. Purchasing something from a general store and making payments, making tea, taking the bus to home or withdrawing money from a bank account are all examples of daily activities. Problem solving can be defined as an activity performed by a human or a computer in order to achieve a specific goal. For example, your computer teacher has asked you to create a poster on World Environment Day on your computer and share it with her. How will you complete this task by using a stepwise approach? Let's follow the steps given for the solution to creating the poster. Step 1 is to decide the application like Microsoft Paint, Microsoft Word or even PowerPoint that you will be using to create the poster. Next step is to decide the text and pictures you want in your poster. Third step is to start the selected application and select a new document or presentation. Next is to add the content of the poster to the new document and arrange it in a proper layout. Then you verify the content by checking spellings, size of images and other effects. After which you will save the document. Well, this is the most important step. And the last step would be to share it with your teacher by email or any suitable way. The step should be followed in a proper sequence. Otherwise, you may not get the desired results. Let's go into the components of computational thinking. There are four key components of computational thinking, which are decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithm. You're absolutely right. Let us understand these components of computational thinking in detail. Starting with decomposition. It is the process of breaking down complex problems into smaller and more manageable parts. We use computational thinking concepts on a regular basis without realizing it. Let's see the examples for this. There is a precise order in which you should put on your clothes in the morning. Let's see how. The shirt first, pant or the skirt second, jacket third, socks fourth and shoes fifth. We make decisions about what to wear in the same way. Computational thinking is often applied in the kitchen while preparing various meals. Did you know that? Well, cooking recipes always contain a set of stages that must be followed in order. Chop the veggies first, then add the garlic to the pan, then add the veggies to the pan and then cook them. You can also make decisions which are analogous to conditional statements. If the pasta is soft, then turn off the heat and drain it. 
or if an extremely spicy dish is to be prepared, then more hot peppers must be added. Cooking may also include operators. If you wish to double a recipe, for example, multiply the amount of all the ingredients by two. From these examples, we can see that we use computational thinking in our day-to-day -day lives. So, it can be concluded here that breaking down the problem and considering a variety of possible contributing factors is the essence of decomposition. These smaller parts are easier to understand and solve. Yes, as we can see here. By breaking a big problem down into smaller, logical parts and further breaking them down into even smaller, similar logical parts. Let's try a simple problem that some of us have faced in our daily routine and try to brainstorm a solution by decomposing the problem. The problem is to create a snakes and ladder computer game. Here is how the solution is designed. Through the main problem, we can deduct into sub-problems into design of playing area, position of snakes and ladders, dice throw for each player, movement up ladder and down snakes and how does a player finish. Let's learn about the second component of computational thinking which is pattern recognition. Once you have decomposed a complex problem, it helps to look for similarities or patterns in each segmented part of the problem. These patterns can help solve the larger problem more effectively. We look for things that have similarities in order to address the problem. It may be that there are no common elements but it should still be a stage in the process. Patterns exist between different problems and within a single problem. For recognizing patterns for solving problems in everyday life, we can look for distinguishing attributes like color, shape, size and extract features or matching patterns. For example, every one of us has done laundry with all your clothes including socks. After the socks have dried, you use pattern recognition in order to pair the socks back together. Let us understand more about patterns. Here is an example with drawing cats. To draw a series of animals, what are the patterns we can recognize? All cats have similar characteristics, like they all have eyes, tails and hair. They like to eat fish and make meowing noises. We can make a reasonable attempt at drawing a cat by simply including these common features. In computational reasoning, these characteristics are called patterns. Once we know how to describe one cat, we can apply this pattern to other cats. The specifics are the only thing that differs. Identifying patterns will help us design a basic pattern that can be modified as per different specifications. We can observe all kinds of interesting patterns in nature. Let us view some of nature's symmetrical patterns. The pattern recognition task is about Sudoku. This classic game involves a grid of 81 squares. The grid is divided into 9 blocks, each containing 9 squares. The rules of the game are simple. Each of the 9 blocks has to contain all the numbers from 1 to 9 within its squares. Each number can also appear once in a row, column or box. Use your pattern recognition skills to solve the puzzle. Well, feel free to do it by pausing this lesson. And now, here is the solution to it. Moving on to the third component, that is abstraction. Simplifying a problem and identifying important parts of each problem without needing to know extra details is the smartest concept of computational thinking. Abstraction refers to filtering irrelevant details. An example is when someone receives a gift at their birthday party. Then they try to see the gift inside the wrapper or packing material but they do not bother about the wrapper. So here, we can say that the gift packed inside the wrapper is an abstract quantity. The wrapper does not have any use, 
So it is not an abstract value. Another one is when driving a car, there are some essential elements that you need to know. How to turn on the engine, how to use the brakes, how to use the gears. There are some non-essential elements that you could afford to ignore, such as the number of kilometers per liter, the dimensions of the wheel and how each component under the bonnet works. These non-essential things are useful to know, but non-essential for actually driving the car. And now moving forward to the last component of computational thinking, which is algorithm. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step process for solving a problem within a limited time. The algorithm can be represented in the form of a flowchart or pictorial representation. Also, the algorithm can be in the form of a plain English text. These algorithms can be converted into a program using a computer language. For example, if you can tie shoelaces, make a cup of tea or prepare a meal, then you already know how to follow an algorithm. In an algorithm, each instruction is identified and the order in which they should be carried out is planned. Algorithms are often used as a starting point for creating a computer program and they are sometimes written as a flowchart or in pseudocode. If you want to tell a computer to do something, we have to write a computer program that will tell the computer step by step exactly what we want it to do and how we want it to do it. This step by step program will need planning and to do this we use an algorithm. An algorithm can be designed by keeping in mind the following points like What are the inputs for the problem? In which order do instructions need to be carried out? What decisions need to be made to solve the problem? Are any areas of problems repeated? And what is the desired output of the program? In computer terms, algorithm is a sequence of steps or computer operations which collectively solve a given problem. Consider the following example to understand the stepwise approach. Here is a stepwise approach to buy a chocolate from the market. The first step would be to think of chocolates you like. The next step is to get some money. Then visit the shop, buy the chocolate, then return home and stop. Through the above example, we have learned that any problem in our daily life is solved in a step-by-step -step manner. Therefore, you unknowingly follow an algorithm. Isn't that interesting? Algorithms are often broken down into smaller chunks such as sub-algorithms so that they become easier to read. When an algorithm is written in the form of a programming language, it becomes a program. There can be more than one approach to solve a problem and hence we can have more than one algorithm for a particular problem. The choice of an algorithm should be made on the basis of time and space complexity. Algorithms are very useful in solving problems. There are many advantages of writing algorithms for solving any problem. Let's look at some of them. Firstly, they are easy to understand. Next, they are easy to implement. Then, they describe the steps that should be taken to solve a problem. Also, it helps us eliminate any errors in our problem-solving logic. Next, they are independent of any computer language. And lastly, they can be easily converted into flowcharts and then into computer programs. Let's learn about writing algorithms. The construction of an algorithm is a stage that requires creative thinking and finding the best possible combination of steps to get the desired result. Starting with example 1, which is the algorithm to polish your shoes. The first step is to start, followed by opening the shoe polish, then to put shoe polish on the brush, polish one shoe. Next is to put shoe polish on the brush, then polish the other shoe. Now we close the shoe polish and then last step is to stop. Let's move on to another example which is the algorithm to find the product, sum and difference of two numbers. The first step being to start. 
Second step is to read two numbers and store them in A and B. Third is to multiply two numbers. Then print the product. Next, add two numbers A and B. Then to print the sum. The next step is to subtract the number B from number A. Then print the difference. And the last step is to stop. Let's look at the final example which is an algorithm to display all even numbers between 2 to 100. First step is of course to start. Then to take the value of n is equal to 2 and print n. Next is to update n is equal to n plus 2 and check if the value of n is greater or equal to 100. Fifth step is if step 4 is true then go to step 6 or else repeat step 1 to 4 and lastly stop. Let's conclude the chapter now. Computational thinking is defined as the process of formulating and solving problems by breaking them down into simple steps. It is a powerful problem solving technique that equips us to solve complex problems in the modern world. It is an analytical thinking skill that draws on concept from computer science but is a fundamental skill useful for everyone. There is hardly any professional where computers and computational methods are not used. New disciplines have come up in the past decades due to the advancement in computational methods. Also, computational thinking concepts are used in other disciplines also including biology, health, retail, transportation, history, journalism, finance and archaeology. With that, students, we have completed our chapter, Computational Thinking. I am sure you all learned quite a lot about it and how it unknowingly affects our life every day. I will see you soon in the next class. Bye!